Hello, I'm Ginger Pan, and you can find out my background by typing my name, Ginger Pan, into Google, and you find out my academic background. Today I'm going to talk about beam theory and stress in, in beams. Uh, there's a lot of beams uh, in civil engineering building and, and the engineering structures. And, and here is one of them. It's not an engineering structure. I, I, I got quite a lot of bamboos in my garden. And, and this is one of them. And as you know, bamboos, they, they like to grow high and, and tall to reach the sun, sunlight. Uh, and, you know, when the wind blow and the bamboo, you know, bad. Yeah? So that's here is a typical example of a, a bee. And uh, we want to design structures, we want to calculate stresses in beams, and, and to explain, you know, here's a, another piece of bamboo, apply bending moment, so if there are stresses in this beam. And, and this is too hard to demonstrate, so I, I find something which is easy to deform. This is something I find from my, my kitchen. So let me demonstrate stresses in a beam. So here's a piece of beam, and I apply a bending moment. Yeah, I apply a bending moment. And then the obvious thing to notice is that when the, the material is bent, is so then the top layer of the material, they are stretched. Yeah? And the bottom layer of the material, they are compressed. Yeah? Look, yeah? Stretched and compressed. Right? So it's easy to understand that stress at the top is tensile. So this piece of material here, you know, if you look at it that way, this material there, they are under a tensile stress. And then stress at the bottom, that piece of material there, is under compression. So stress top layer is positive and negative yeah, at, the, at the bottom. And, but if it's positive on the top and negative uh, at the bottom, and, and it must become zero, yeah, in, somewhere in the middle. So here is, you know, I draw a line there. So, so look, so if this beam is banded, top layer, comp you know, tensile, bottom layer compressed, this middle layer there, the line I draw there, is neither stretched nor compressed. Yeah? So that line there, that layer there, simply sort of get curved, but it doesn't change its length. So zero string there, corresponding to zero stress. Yeah? So stress there is zero. So that's, that layer there is known as a neutral line or neutral plane, depending on which way, whichever way you think is three-dimensional or two-dimensional, right? So that, that is easy to understand, and that understanding is summarized into a, a, a simple mathematical formula for stresses in B. And I just lost my pen somewhere. Find it. So stress in beam summarized into a very simple equation. So stress in beam is m bending moment y over i. So let me sort of focus on this y there. And that's basically that y there play the rule I just explained. So here is a beam. Yeah. <laughs> Try to draw that. And then why so the, the top layer is pull tensile stress. The bottom layer there is compressed. Right? And then here is a line I draw. So this this is where Stress is zero. Draw a line there. So that y there is this coordinate. That's called y. So y sit on this neutral plane. Y is positive. The top half become zero there. Become negative at the lower part. Yeah. 
So positive Y give you positive tensile stress, negative Y give you a compressive stress, and it's zero there. So that's the first thing you should notice, yeah? So why summarize the, the, this understanding I just explained? The other thing to notice is that <clears throat> this is a linear function. So stress is a linear function of y. So let me try to draw this stress in a, in a different way. So if I just draw a line, draw a vertical line there. So I, I, I draw it outside, so just, right? So we said it's positive stress there, it's negative stress there. Yeah, it's somewhere, it's zero in the middle. And then you can imagine that, so that stress becomes some, some kind of distribution in between. I draw a very arbitrary line there. And then the assumption is this is a linear function. Yeah? Y plus Y. Yeah? So that's corresponding to that Y there. So stress, this stress, this represents stress. Stress. Stress is a linear function of Y. And it turns out that that assumption is a pretty good one. So that's okay, so we now we understood you know, that part of the equation. The next thing, you know, in order for you to use this simple beam theory, you need to understand what bending moment is. And I started by explaining the bending moment. The thing about beam is, um, yeah, with this structure, this beam, it's very difficult. It, it's impossible for me to pull it apart. I'm not strong enough to break it that way. Yeah. And but what I, if I want, if I you know, make a bit of effort, I can bend it. And bend if I bend it, I can break it. The reason why it's easier to for me to break it if I bend it is because this lens, yeah, the beam is always very long. This lens act as a, a amplifier. So imagine I'm holding this end, and I apply load, what you call load there, and this lens here act as an amplifier. So if I apply load here, I generate a, a, a bending, a bending moment there, and that moment gets la larger and larger and larger, yeah, and is maximum at this end. So let me just draw that, draw that beam there. So say we're talking about and this is my hand hold it really hard there and then this is the bamboo yeah and apply the load there so obviously if this is if this beam is going to break it's going to break there so i'm worried about there and so let's imagine let's say this piece of bamboo has a length of l and then the binding moment over there is simply P times L. Yeah. And that L as act as an amplifier to this load. The longer it gets, the bigger the binding moment. Of course, if you want to calculate somewhere else, if you want to calculate the binding moment there, you need to know that length there. If that length is Z and then binding moment there, is P times Z, right? So let's just, ch now let's consider another example. Let's change this a little bit. Let's say now uh, I'm still playing with this piece of bamboo and I'm supporting, just supporting the, the beam uh, into N and I'm going to apply a load. So let me demonstrate that load there. I'm going to hang, hang something in the middle. So that is called a simply supported beam with a, a force, <laughs> with a force acting in between. So let, let, let's look at that. Let me just draw that. So again, here's a piece of bamboo. 
This time is simply supported there. Supported there. With the load applied in the middle. So I'm worried, you know, by common sense, I'm worried about that because if this load is too large and the beam is going to break there. So worry about that. So I want to calculate the binding moment there. But I can't because before I do that, I need to know the reaction forces. Yeah, because otherwise this is the binding moment is an internal internal force or it's a generalized force, it's internal moment. So to calculate that I have to expose the, the reaction forces. And in this simple case, if this is P there, the support force, this force is simply shared by these two support. Yeah? So the reaction force there, that's going to be simply P over 12. Ah, sorry, P over 2. This is another P over 2, not P over 12. And let's say it's been, this, this thing has a length of L. Yeah? Then the binding moment underneath this force there is simply that force times this length. Right? So binding moment there is P over 2 times L over 2. You ask what happened to that force? Well, that force goes through this, this, this point. So that force generates no binding moment there. And you ask, what about that force? Well, when you calculate binding moment, you look from one direction. Yeah? So it's, like, it's just like you're holding, holding that section there. So the binding moment is not that moment plus that moment. It's simply this force times this less. And you can, of, of course, you can look from the other direction, and therefore the binding will be the same, that force, and that's less. So as, as long as you understand that, it's, it's a simple, it's a simple measure. I make it simple, but in fact, calculating both binding, this is a binding moment analysis, in a slightly more realistic engineering problem, is not simple. Uh, let me just make this slightly more let me make a, a small change to the support I'm talking about. So let's say we get rid of it. So let's say now the same trying to draw a straight line. So let me just draw almost straight. <laughs> That's fine. We'll make it a bit longer. So I have one support there, another support there. Force apply, yeah. If I just make, if it's okay, that feels a bit weak, yeah. Let me add another support there. Now, how do I calculate the binding moment? Of course, you say okay. Then there is three reaction forces there. So there's one reaction force there. There's another one there. There's another one there, yeah. So. Let me draw that more clear. So I find a reaction force. A reaction no. <laughs> I draw it. It was here, okay? Reaction force. There's reaction force. There. So I have three reaction force, let's say call that R A, call that R B, call that R C. You can go home and spend time. By trying to find these three reaction forces, I can tell you it's not a simple problem. The reason is why it's not simple is because you cannot find the three reaction forces by static equilibrium. And let me explain why. Imagine you when you have only two, two support there, we know in this simple case this force is shared between two. Yeah, so imagine there are two persons. A guy standing there holding the beam on this end, another guy standing there holding the support, and then between the two of you, you share that, that force. Now you add a, another guy, a third guy there. So you add a third guy there. RB. Yeah, you add this, this guy there. 
Now you ask the question, how the three of you share this load? Yeah, before, it's just evenly shared, half, half. Now you add a third man there, so man of growth there. What is the share? How, how do the three of them share that load? You don't know. The reason why you don't know is because that depends how much this guy, how much effort this guy wants to make. Because that man or that boy or girl can simply stand there, pretend he's helping, he or, oh, or she is helping. Yeah? He can just, just touch it, but don't make any real effort. And then if that guy is, is pretending just to do it, but not actually giving any support, they will still, this force will be still shared by this two. If he is willing to contribute, you know, really hard, I think he can contribute a lot. You see, the problem now become now mathematical. It become, you know, it depends on how much effort the, the, the three of them would like to contribute. In mechanical term, that would depend on the stiffness of the three support you have. So that problem immediately becomes complicated. So even a simple change of the problem make finding the reaction force, hence the binding moment, a difficult one. So this is called, in mechanics, this is called statically indeterminate indeterminate problem. And of course the problem can be solved and if you look in the textbooks, in many lectures, you know, they, they love to teach you this because it's challenging, it's interesting, there's a clever ideas there. But I really, here's my point, I really discourage you to learn those kind of methods. Because you, know, you can solve a simple problem like that, but in real engineering structure, and there is easily, you might be dealing with a portal frame, for example, where some strengthening mechanisms yeah, apply a few load there, and that's a statically indeterminate structure. To solve that problem by hand, it's almost impossible. Hence, we need the finite element method. If you use if you're using finite element method to do this analysis, then the issue whether the structure is statically determinated or indeterminate is becomes irrelevant. It doesn't really matter anymore. That's why finite element method is such a powerful tool. It doesn't distinguish between these two different structures. So it looks simple. Yeah, just a binding moment. You do need to understand the rule played by the binding moment. But if a structure gets complicated, finding the binding moment by hand is a difficult one. But that's not a problem anymore because you can use finite element method. Thank you.